Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I want to show you how to use the splitter tool inside of PreSonus Studio One. We're going to be looking at the splitter tool in Studio One today, but before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and talk about how, how you can use the splitter tool when you're mixing. We're gonna look at a couple different things here today. We're gonna start here with the drums for the splitter tool. So let me hit play so you can hear what the mix sounds like here before we dive in and start talking about the splitter tool. So here's our finished mix for this song. So the first way you can use the splitter tool in Studio One is for parallel processing. So I'm gonna pull in the fat channel here on my drum bus. So this is just on the drums, we're gonna do this the first time. Now, if I wanted to do some parallel compression on the drums, and I don't wanna create another bus and do a bunch of different routing, the way I can do it right here on our drum bus, is if you come up here to the routing icon, it'll switch you into this view here. Now you can either view it regularly with your inserts, and you can see what inserts are doing on this side, or we can pull in the splitter tool here. Now the splitter tool is gonna split it normally into two paths. There's a couple different ways you can use it. This is the first way we're gonna talk about it here. So it's gonna split it into two channels here. So essentially parallel processing. So I'm gonna throw the fat channel up on this side. So now we have one signal channel that has the fat channel on it, and then one channel of routing that is just the normal drum bus here. Now, if we're looking still here, there's a couple cool things you can do here. You can mute channels. So if you see, if you click here on the line, you can break the line, meaning we're muting this channel here. Or same thing over here, you can mute this channel. And then you have a volume control for each channel as well before they come back together to be a uh, one signal path again, which is kind of cool. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do some parallel processing. Ooh, excuse me, on our drum bus here. And I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use the classic comp here. So I'm gonna pull recovery down to one. We'll go, we'll go three to one here and we'll pull our threshold down. We'll see what we're doing. So what I'm gonna do here actually is I'm gonna mute our dry signal here on the splitter. So the, the channel that's not being processed or the signal path that's not being processed, I'm muting that. We're just listening to this side here with the fat channel on it. So let's, let's get some compression going here. So I've set my recovery at the fastest here. We went up to a three to one ratio and I just pulled the threshold down to we're doing about seven to 10 dB a reduction here. Just getting some nice attack highlighted here on the drums. And then I pulled the, the output gain up till we were uh, about even in and out of the compressor here. So now we have a squash channel here. So let's kick the regular channel back in. And now we have the ability to mix in the squash channel using the volume fader here inside the splitter tool. So I'm gonna pull it all the way down I'm gonna hit play here and I'm gonna start to pull it up. So I'm gonna mix in this compressed channel with our regular channel here, right inside the splitter tool. So on the same track here on our drum bus, we're gonna mix this in.
And then a cool way you can look at it here is we can A, B just on this channel here. So just by breaking the line here and muting this signal path, we can A, B this compressor here and A, B this, this mixed channel, this channel that we're mixing in here. So, so listen one more time with and without it here on our splitter tool. So that's one way you can use the splitter tool here. The, that's the first way you can just do parallel processing, right? So it's gonna split it into two signal paths. You can process one one way and leave the other one raw or process them both different ways and mix them together in on your channel. So we're gonna nuke this here. That's our first way there. Oh, and you saw if I click on the splitter tool here, you have access to a couple different options over here as well. So you can see the level of both channels here on blue. And then you also have the ability to mute the outputs uh, with the check boxes here, and we'll show you the number of splits as well. We're gonna talk about uh, one of the other channel modes here with the splitter now. So we're gonna switch over to, we'll do it on guitars here. So we're gonna talk about the, the channel split mode here. So if I switch on, here's our guitars inside the mix uh, normally. <laughs> So this is something you can do on guitars if you have stereo guitars, or you can do it on keys as well. You can see we have a couple stereo keys, so we'll try it on keys as well. But something nice is if you have stereo guitars like this going into a bus, or if you just have a stereo guitar channel, we can use the splitter tool to gain access to both sides here. So if we, we pull in a splitter tool here, right, going up to our routing icon, pull in a splitter tool, I'm putting it after the EQ here, and we flip over to channel split, now what we have is we have access to the left side and we have access to the right side. So what we could do is we, we could put an EQ on each side here and EQ our left and right sides separately. So same way here, if I mute uh, our right channel here, now we'll just hear our left side. So what we can do with this is say we wanted to emphasize different frequencies on each side here. I'm gonna to flip to mono, so we're hearing uh, each signal channel in the middle here. So our left side and our right side, we'll hear them in the middle as we're processing them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of EQ on each side and emphasize opposite frequencies sort. So it'll make our guitars appear a little bit wider here. So here's the processing for our left side. Put a little bit more low end, pulled some of the low mids out, a little bit of mid range, tucked the high end back a little bit. Now we're gonna flip over to our right side here. So I'm gonna mute our left side and we're gonna take a listen to our right side and we're gonna do some different processing here.
So now we've got some opposite processing on each one, right? Cutting, cutting some of the, the, the low end on one and emphasizing the low end on the other, cutting the top end on one and emphasizing the top end on the other. So some opposite boosts here to help widen up our guitars a little bit. So if we throw back both back in now, we'll hear the finished product here. So here's our stereo guitars now. Gives us a little bit of extra width there on our guitars with some opposite processing, but the splitter tool can give you access to uh, both sides of a stereo instrument. So if you have a stereo piano or a stereo organ track or something like this, you can get access to both sides of, of the channel. Uh, here we have access to both sides of the channel. We have a left guitar and a right guitar, but if you have something like the piano here, where it's a stereo instrument, instead of going in and splitting it into two mono instruments and then having more tracks, Using the splitter tool like this can give you easy access to both sides of the channel without having to deal with uh, more tracks than you bargained for. Now the last thing we have here is we have the, oh, I wanna do it on bass here. So the last thing we have on the splitter channel is the frequency split here. So I'm gonna pull in, I'm gonna pull in chorus, I think. But if we solo up our bass guitar here, here's what our bass guitar sounds like in the mix. So it's a good sounding bass guitar, but what we can do now is after our processing here, if we pull in the splitter tool, we pull in the splitter tool. Oh, I want I want it at the end there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the plugins above. That's the nice thing here. It's drag and drop too, so we can move plugins around inside the routing tool like this. So if I put pick, click on the splitter here, oh my god, I can't talk. The last option we have to edit is frequency splits. So we can split these two channels by frequency and we can set a cutoff here. So if I flip over to last EQ here, let's take a look at where our bass is sitting. So I'm gonna set it at about 275 or 276 here. So we're gonna dial this up here. Here's our frequency dial here that's splitting these two channels. So this side is gonna be below the frequency point. This side's gonna be above the frequency point here. So we're gonna do, we'll do 276. So that's our frequency split here. So now if we mute, this channel over here, our channel on the right, we're just gonna hear below 276. But what we can do now is if we listen to just above 276, we can put some chorus just on the top end of our bass guitar here. So let's throw in a chorus plugin and add some chorus to the top end of our bass guitar and it won't affect our nice powerful low end we have. So we have a couple cool things here that we can do with the chorus. We could widen the top end of the bass if we wanted to. I don't necessarily want to do that, so I'm pulling the stereo width all the way down. Mixed in a little bit of chorus here, so just layering a little bit of this kind of smooth, swirly chorus here on the top end of our bass guitar. That's sounding good. So now what we can do is we can flip in back our bottom end, and now we'll have our full bass guitar with a little bit of chorus just on the top end of our bass.
So those are the three ways you can use the splitter tool inside of Studio One here. We have the normal mode. The normal mode is just splitting it into two separate channels. So we have one channel that you can leave raw, one channel that you can parallel process, whether you wanna do compression or course or what have you. Then we have our channel split. Channel split splits it into the left channel and the right channel. So if you're using something like stereo piano or stereo guitars, it gives you access to your left channel as well as your right channel. And then the last one here is the frequency split. So we can set a frequency point. One channel will be below that, one channel is above it. So we could put chorus on just the top end of our bass guitar here. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It's my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next video. We'll